My man's all make tracks like this. What's going on y'all? So I attended the Winter NAMM show in Anaheim and I wanted to share some of my thoughts on some of the new products I saw and some of the new products I got to try out. So the first thing I saw when I walked in NAMM were some new headphones from Neumann. So Neumann is getting into the headphone game and these are the NDH20s. They're coming in at $499, so right under $500, and Neumann is marketing them as studio headphones, casual listening headphones, and mixing headphones. So they're saying you can do anything with these headphones. I got to try them on. I got to use them for about five minutes listening to some music off an iPad, and these headphones sounded really great. Really flat response, very open, detailed, and the closed back design really helps keep the noise out. Uh, even on the noisy NAM floor, I was able to block that out and I could just hear the music. So let's start with studio. So studio headphones take a beating. So I'd, I'd feel a certain kind of way about using some $500 headphones for studio use. Uh, now maybe if I was the engineer and the artist, I could see it. But you know, if I was running a studio and many people in and out using the headphones, yeah, I don't know about that for some $500 headphones. But as far as mixing and casual listening, I would definitely recommend these headphones for that. Um, I could hear them or see them maybe rivaling like some Bose or higher-end Sony headphones on the consumer side. Uh, I don't know how well consumers know the, the Neumann brand, uh, but it can definitely uh, go head-to-head -head with those brands. And... It's foldable, has, is a foldable design, has a removable cable, and the frequency response on it goes from 5 hertz up to 30K. So very nice premium quality feel. They're very comfortable. I can um, see yourself wearing them for long periods of time, which would you know make them good for mixing. And the inside of the ear cups are orange. I don't know how I feel about that. I kind of feel like it takes away from the professional look of it but then it also makes it stand out so I'm a little 50 50 on that but uh, very pleased with these headphones and glad to see Neumann get into the headphone game so here we have the McDSP APB16 so this was one of the most interesting things I saw at NAMM because it's something that I've have not seen before so we all know McDSP as a plug-in maker but this is hardware it's hardware that's controlled by software from my understanding it's basically a box of circuits and transformers and you control from the plug-in compressors limiters uh and said they got saturator so the plug-in model gets processed in this box and then comes back into your DAW. So you have a plug-in, but all of the sound is coming from this box. All of the sound is analog and it's just controlled by the plug-in. i really curious to see this in action and they didn't announce a price on it. So I'm curious to see how much uh, this will cost as well. Uh, due to the 16 in the name, you do have 16 channels of this or 16 instances of this that you can use in your DAW and it is Thunderbolt uh, so it's I forgot how many they said you can daisy chain together I believe it's four um, but you can do that to get I guess up to 64 channels uh, if you have four of them of this uh, so really interesting and uh, can't wait to find out more about this at the Mog audio booth they were showing the new Magnum K plugin. Uh, this is done by Plugin Alliance. Uh, I've already purchased it and have been using mine and have been very pleased with it. I have a Magnum K, just one, and the plugin now allows me to do stereo compression with it. And the plugin also adds a BX section, which has a uh, stereo width, uh, a mix knob for dry and wet, and also a high pass filter for the uh, compression circuit. Now, uh, oh, it also has a gain reduction meter. So I've been wearing out my Magnum K for uh, mixing lead vocals. So now I can delegate that to the plug-in and 
use my hardware for tracking. Uh, like I said, this is already out now. I already have mine, and you can get it at Plugin Alliance. At the Daking booth, I spotted the Comp 2. So this is a stereo a dual mono compressor that's based off the 500 series Daking compressor. Uh, same circuit, same everything, just instead of the LED metering, we now have a VU meter for your uh, gain reduction. And I believe it switches to output as well. But um, simple controls, compression, output. Like I said, just like the Daking 500 series compressor, we just have it in a rack mount now. Uh, not sure when this will be shipping. I believe the cost will probably be about 1000 or maybe 1100 somewhere around there. Uh, but uh, really interested to see this come because maybe about a month ago, I was actually looking for uh, the Day King 500 series compressors for the uh, podcast I've been recording. And I wanted a simple compressor that I could use while uh, tracking the podcast to record the vocals through. And, you know, now I have this. So uh, I may be checking this out once it starts shipping, which will hopefully be soon. So this was definitely one of the coolest things I saw at NAMM. This is a limited edition 312 API Pre. So API is celebrating their 50 year anniversary and we have this uh, 312 Pre, which only uh, 150 of them are being made. And we also have a 550A where only 50 of these are being made. And if I'm not mistaken, some other uh, 500 series modules from API will come in limited editions this year. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe these are the first two that we will see. And these are just stunning. Uh, we're used to seeing that black faceplate from API. So to get something different out the ordinary and especially limited edition as well from a company with the leg legacy and heritage of API is really cool. And you know, I've really been into... A limited edition things just where uh, there's just something about knowing that you're the only person out of 100 or 50 or 150 to own uh, one of these units uh, so these are definitely uh, one of the coolest things I saw at NAMM so new from useful arts is the SFP 30 this is a single channel version of the SFP 60 and whereas the SFP 60 is two channels and costs 3500 this single desktop version is 1300 so they got it down to half the price or less than half the price of the S SFP 60 for the SFP 30 uh, this is a single channel tube uh, pre it has uh, pinto tubes triode tubes and a color knob to add uh, harmonics to the signal uh, fully clockwise is going to give you a, a bigger thicker sound whereas the color knob counterclockwise will give you a more clean sound i've heard many demos with this pre and have been very impressed with it and is one of the best two pre's that i've heard uh, so to see a, a single channel come at a more affordable price is a really good thing because at the 3500 i know a lot of people uh, that the SFP 60 was just out of their budget. So you now have the opportunity for the SFP 30 now uh, coming in at 1300. Uh, definitely going to be looking at picking one up for myself. So this is the V7 from Vanguard. Uh, this is a transformer FET mic and the capsule is removable, so you can swap the capsules, and they're looking to ship these with up to four capsules, which would essentially be more uh, four microphones in one uh, that you would get with this mic. Uh, it also has multiple pickup patterns, has a total of nine pickup patterns, which is the knob that you see there on the front. Uh, really excited to check this out and hear it, and uh, this should be shipping later this year. So in the middle here on the La Chapelle booth is the 983. Uh, this These are uh, a half rack unit, which is the one you see in the middle with the single one and then a two channel one. And what's unique about this two pre from La Chapelle is that 
It has what they're calling true 48, which means that it will supply a full 48 volts of phantom power to the microphone, whereas they say um, most other pre's uh, do not do this. And the benefit that they say that you get from the true 48 or supplying the full 48 volts to your condenser mic is that it has more headroom and has a quicker transient recovery. Um, it's not something I was aware of with other pre's and phantom power. You know, you have your, your 48 volt switch and, you know, I've always thought that it was sending 48 volts, but, um, I'd like to hear this and, you know, check it out and, uh, see what, you know, differences I hear with this, uh, true 48 that they've added to these, uh, mic pre's. At the Roswell booth, they were showing off the new Delphos 2. This will be the successor to the original Delphos, and it adds a third pickup pattern to it, whereas the original Delphos only had two. Uh, I'll be really excited to get my hands on and try this mic. I've been really happy with my Kolaris. And speaking of the Kolaris, you'll notice that the Delphos now has the same body and style as the Kolaris. Uh, so this should be uh, shipping later this year and uh, really excited to check this one out. So this is a new 500 series pre distributed by Pro Audio Distribution. Uh, this is the Mo 67 from Tom Hilby. Uh, I've been looking for a new 500 series pre and I think I might have found it. Uh, this pre is really interesting to me. The op amp in it is modeled after the 1967 Melkor op amp. And from speaking to uh, Tom Hilby, he explained that uh, Melkor was the company that became API. So Melkor was before API. I'm uh, really interested to hear and check this out. Uh, the knob is, the gain knob is detented. You've got an impedance switch as well. Everything else is your standard that you have on a mic pre your uh, phantom power pad. Uh, but I'm really interested to to check these out. And, you know, I've been deciding if I want to try one or get a pair because I'm looking for a 500 series pre that I want to have a pair in. And uh, so far, I'm really interested in this one. So I think I'm going to pick up one of these and check them out. This is the Chandler TG microphone, and this thing blew me away. Uh, it has a EMI tape style EQ on it. It's a five switch knob, and then you have system A, system B. It's giving you 10 different tones, and they're very different tones. It's not one of those subtle things. Like you hear the difference as you change the knobs and speak into the microphone. Uh, really want one of these mics. And this is definitely going on the wish list. I don't think it's something I'm going to pick up right away, but definitely something I want in the future. Um, this mic is just unique and really cool. And to be able to have that many different tones you can get out of one microphone, uh, really, really interesting. Uh, also, uh, the mic comes with its own power supply and the uh, power you know, for the microphone is it's all loaded on the capsule, all 48 volts. So uh, that's pretty interesting as well and, you know, unique to this microphone. But, uh, yeah, definitely going on the wish list. Uh, if you ever have a chance to, yeah, definitely uh, check out this mic. It's definitely worth um, just hearing the different tones that you can get with it. So this is these are uh, four of the five interfaces that Presonus announced at Winter NAM. Uh, these are all USB-C interfaces, and I think the one we're missing is the 26C. It's another uh, small portable one there. And, you know, and everything from portable up to rack mount, Presonus says you covered with these interfaces. Of course, they come with Studio One Artists. Uh, one thing to note about these, I really like the... Uh, these, the black line that Presonus has been moving their products to it just has more of a, a professional look with this black versus the uh, blue style of their previous interfaces. And I forget the model, but these basically are replacing the uh, Studio 
let me st- I, I don't, I'm not sure the name, but uh, anyone who follows Presonus products know what I'm speaking of. You've got these same interfaces just um, in the blue, which was uh, USB 2.0, I believe. So we now have USB-C. Uh, also different on these are the knobs. I, I really like the knobs on here. They have a nice feel to them. Uh, but um, one thing that, that Presonus comes out with a lot it seems each year are new interfaces uh so but you know happy to see these new line come in um glad that presonus is getting ahead of the curve uh, or jumping on the curve i should say uh, with the USB-C format and what we've got here is the d box plus looking at the top of the rack here uh, this is one of the things that I felt it was long overdue to be updated, so I'm glad that Dangerous has finally decided to update the original D-Box. Uh, new on this, you have uh, Bluetooth now, where you can stream audio through Bluetooth. Uh, you have a DIM, and you have a a sub, a toggle for a uh, sub, uh, which are all things that I wanted to see in a new uh, D-Box. Uh, the only other things that it, it doesn't have that I wish it did have, I would like to see a, a remote for it. Um, I know that puts you into the territory of the Monitor ST if it had a, a remote, a desktop remote for it. Um, the transformer feature on the, the 2Bus Plus I thought would have been cool as well, but um, definitely not complaining of what we have here for the uh, D-Box Plus. Of course, you got your D to A converter in it as well uh, so this is a huge upgrade over the original D box and I'm trying to decide if it's a an upgrade that even though it's a big upgrade I'm not sure this time if it's an upgrade uh, that I want to make even though I've been you know wanting this um, I've kind of got used to my, my setup now with the original D box and the, the pre-sonus monitor station but um, one thing to note, if you've been eyeing an original D-Box, it has gone down to 1,000 now from 500, and that's to make room for the D-Box Plus, because the D-Box Plus is coming in at 2,000, which is also the same price as a monitor ST, so uh, just one thing to, to note there. Uh, not sure how quickly these will be shipping, um, but uh, they should be coming soon. So there's a look at just some of the products I saw at Winter Nam. Uh, this is the first Winter Nam I've been to, and uh, this show is just huge. Uh, if you've been thinking about going, it's definitely worth the trip. Uh, had a great time in Anaheim. Uh, had a great time in L.A. Uh, shout out to Dion Dawson for uh, being a host and showing us L.A. for a day. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely be back next year unless something crazy happens, but um, you know, any questions, comments, uh, let me know. Uh, I might get around to showing some of the other stuff I saw. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, keep this video around, you know, 20 minutes or so. Uh, but uh, uh, Fred and Stein announced some new 500 series. Uh, Wes Audio had some stuff. I was really impressed with their stuff. Um, but yeah, just so much to see. Uh, Berg microphones. But like I said, any questions, comments, let me know, and I'll catch y'all next time.